Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shiva Tankamani, an integration technical architect. In this video, we are going to talk about uh, JMS topic subscription. So we all know uh, how the queue, basic queue, publish and consumption works. And uh, I would like to walk you through uh, the basics and the uh, use case uh, for using JMS topic subscriptions in this video. Let's get started. Let's consider an use case uh, where you would like to develop an API uh, for this scenario where um, you are developing an API where uh, input comes uh, for a new admission. I mean like uh, there is a college a new student joins. Uh, so the admission has been entered and the student master is created. But uh, the requirement is that uh, the college has so many departments like examination department, sports department, library department, payroll, computer lab and audio visual department. So these departments works separately although they are all in the same college. So uh, assume that uh, you are developing an API where this newly admitted uh, student details has to be inserted into the database table for these many departments. Uh, so you can't avoid uh, having the database uh, data replicated across uh, different systems due to uh, some operational reasons. So in this situation, uh, normally uh, we typically use uh, a queue where uh, the student data has been inserted and then we consume it and then uh, we carry out this functionality. So what is the drawback in using uh, such a scenario? Assume that you have these many departments and then you need to insert uh, uh, student information six times into six different uh, systems, whether it could be database or it could be something else. So what happens is you need to do it one by one uh, after the queue message has been consumed. Uh, so uh, you will have in sequence where you write the data uh, into uh, first table and then to second table or third table, etc. And you can, you can uh, argue that uh, you can use stored procedure instead of this uh, DB insert where you can club all the um, insert statements together but there are disadvantages in handling it. So um, it's it's happening good and easy as long as uh, things are going fine but uh, the problem starts when one of the things uh, uh, lead to error. For example you uh, inserted the data into exam department successfully, sports department successfully but uh, uh, failed somewhere in either library or computer lab department. So exception uh, is raised and then there is a, a error that pops out that uh, error occurred during the functionality. So what happens? How will you know that uh, uh, the, uh, how will you know the breakpoint where uh, the error is uh, uh, raised or uh, how will you resume from where? So in order to analyze that you need to go through the logs and then find out in which step uh, it failed. So there could be so many insertion that would have happened in that particular uh, time period then it will be confusing for you to find out and then manually organize or analyze the failed uh, transactions and then continue from where and what. So this is a typical and complex use case uh, uh, where you can develop a sequential insertion easily but still uh, complexity arises uh, once this API goes live when there is an error there is a complexity in identifying where it failed. So in order to uh, handle this uh, kind of use cases, uh, uh, we use uh, topic subscription. Let's get into the technical details. So this is a typical queue where publisher publishes uh, the data into the queue. And then once uh, the data is available, consumer uh, listens or pull the data out of queue and uh, consumes it and then processes the data. But uh, um, the, the challenge here in our, I mean when compared to our scenario requirement, the data will be consumed once and once consumed you have no other way to complete all the transactions otherwise the data will be lost. So that's a typical drawback of this. Uh, so uh, we are going to use topic. So here is how the topic works. So publisher publishes the data into the topic which is like a, a queue. Technically there is no difference but uh, uh, while creating you will have to mention whether it is a topic or queue. 
So once the data is available in this topic, uh, the topic has a capability uh, to uh, send the data to all the subscribers. The same message has been replicated to all the subscribers and uh, the same message will be available in different flows. So these subscribers can consume and then process it individually. So um, the advantage here is uh, you can process them individually. So when there is an error occurring in particular case, you can handle them separately. So you don't need to know uh, where it failed. And then you also have a challenge of uh, continuing from there and then only uh, run the insert statement selectively uh, upon the failed uh, scenarios. But uh, here, uh, this is uh, divided into atomic flow where you can deal with the individual insert separately. So for this uh, topic demo, we are going to take ActiveMQ. Uh, if you want to practice ActiveMQ, you can download it. Uh, uh, it's freely available. Once you download it, and then you can extract the zip file uh, into a specific folder and go to the bin folder and then type ActiveMQ space start. So the server gets started. It's, it's uh, almost like a Tomcat. So you can you don't need to install anything. You can just uh, extract the zip file and then uh, simply run the command. So once started, uh, it will um, it will have some information where uh, uh, you know uh, where the TCP connection is available. So this is a, uh, this is a TP, uh, typical TCP connection that's uh, listening on the port six one six one six. So this is the information that uh, you need to know. Uh, nothing else and then you need to know uh, what is the uh, site address where you can locally run via UI to deal with the topics, queues, etc. So this is a typical UI of uh, ActiveMQ and then you instead of queues uh, you go to the topic and then uh, type the name of the topic that you are interested and click uh, create, the topic is created. So I have created a, a topic called Flash News. So um, uh, I am considering the use, use case as the news will be available in the topic. And uh, there will be multiple subscribers in each country, uh, India subscriber, USA subscribers. So the news uh, can be uh, spread to uh, uh, different part of the world if you want to publish it and you have a website where you want to publish the flash news, you can use this accordingly. So, um, so that's it uh, for creating the uh, topic and uh, let's go to the uh, flow. So this is the Mule 4 application I have created and uh, I have created a, a HTTP listener that is one flow which publishes the incoming student detail to um, topic and there are two different uh, listeners, JMS listeners. This is one and this is two, where uh, we are uh, listening the incoming data and then inserting it into the uh, DB table that's belonging to the uh, appropriate department. So this is a simple example. So first let's see how to create a topic. So uh, you go to the JMS config and uh, you can use uh, specification JMS which is a default uh, available spec you can use. And you don't need to do anything and uh, you can give a username and password uh, for the uh, ActiveMQ, which is by default admin and admin. If you want, you can change the credentials. And this is what I was talking about. The broker URL, you need to give the TCP connection. And it normally it's available as a, a local host, but uh, I have the uh, laptop name uh, so I have uh, given here like this it, even it will work for local host and listening on the port 61616 so this is the uh, JMS uh, configuration this is common to both queue and topic and uh, I have a database configuration and HTTP listener configuration so database uh, I have a local MySQL database started up uh, and listening on 3306 port. And let's see um, uh, how to publish, which is important uh, here. So once uh, HTTP listener l listens uh, the incoming JSON file or XML file, you can extract the data and publish it here. So on publish, 
I have mentioned uh, the destination as a topic name which we have created. Uh, so this is the topic name and uh, you need to choose, uh, it's very important that you need to choose uh, uh, the destination type topic. And there are uh, several other configurations that are used for a different purpose uh, uh, which we can see in the, in the upcoming videos. Now let's see the uh, consumption part. So uh, you simply choose uh, JMS and then uh, use listener, drag and drop. And uh, in the listener, it's very simple. You choose the same uh, JMS configurations that you created and uh, mention the same destination where you published. Uh, this is the consumer or you call it a subscriber and which subscribes the topic uh, flash news and uh, the consumer type you need to select it as a topic consumer so that's it uh, and we will be talking about durable shared no le no local so those are the advanced configuration and we will be seeing it in the next video so right now uh, our uh, um, objective is to um, publish a JSON payload into the HTTP listener and we give the data once and we would expect the data to go to two different tables and uh, so let's uh, see what we are doing here. So after uh, consuming the message from the topic, we do the insertion and uh, we are inserting it into two different tables. The first table is a student master and we are uh, uh, updating the value with payload. And in the next insert statement, we have a library. It's a simple one field uh, uh, DB table where we are inserting uh, into library table, the same payload. So um, here also, I mean, even in the second uh, listener, we have exactly the same configuration, the same JMS configuration and the same destination name. And we mention it as a topic consumer. So it's very simple and now what will happen is once you publish this data into the topic, it will be consumed, the same identical message will be consumed once here as well as in this flow. So it will be same copy duplicated twice for each consumer. So let's run it and then see what happens here. So here is the... Um, HTTP listener which listens on uh, 8081 port uh, with the resource path new student. We are just using the uh, field name which we are uh, extracting here. And in the set payload we are setting the payload dot name. Name is a field which goes as a payload and then gets published. So uh, let's see the database content. So we have a library and the student master tables and uh, student master tables contains uh, one entry called Sachin and uh, library table contains two entries. Now let's see what happens when we publish uh, next. So I am publishing Saurav Ganguly and you get the data Saurav Ganguly here. So now let's go back and investigate the uh, database table. So here is the data. So now uh, the student master has been uh, updated with the name Saurav Ganguly and the library also added with Saurav Ganguly. So let's add one more name. Rahul Dravid. Got the result. And we go to the database table and investigate. We have Rahul Dravid added in student master and in the library also it's added. So it's very simple and uh, very effective uh, when you are individually publishing and then handling it separately. It might look like uh, too much work by having uh, um, too many listeners but uh, uh, since you divide and uh, conquer the same functionality uh, in an atomic level the exception handling is easy and then the maintenance is also very easy. That's it in this video and in the next video we are going to talk about the advanced uh, uh, concepts of topic where we are going to see how to filter out the records based on uh, priority and uh, 
other header details that are available or coming from the topic. And uh, also we are going to see uh, uh, how to do a content based routing uh, in order to do some additional filtering criteria by means of uh, uh, XPath or JSON path uh, uh, in order to do the filtering effectively. So hope you like this video and if so please uh, click thumbs up and subscribe my videos and uh, let's meet in the next video soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.